But let's turn to the story that's breaking at this moment. India and China have finished their day-long border talks held between top military commanders in Ladakh. India has reportedly made it clear to China that Beijing must restore the April status quo. Chinese side, meanwhile, has asked India to stop the road construction in the contentious area. India says construction inside the line of actual control and there should be no logic behind the Chinese objections. Remember, China has continued an aggressive build-up in eastern Ladakh. Let's go across to our defense correspondent Abhishek Bhalla. He joins us. Abhishek, what is the big takeaway at the end of this first major round of talks between the top military commanders? Well, Rajdeep, uh, top on India's agenda was uh, restoration of uh, status quo as of April. Uh, but it seems that, you know, uh, China too has uh, certain concerns, as was expected. And uh, with the trigger being road construction and China still having uh, objections and concerns over it, it seems uh, this is not uh, the last uh, such meeting because the standoff, which is already one month old, uh, could continue if there is uh, no breaking, uh, if there's no uh, breakthrough in the, in, in the situation at the line of actual control. And as of now, it seems the deadlock will continue. The deadlock will continue. Abhishek Bhalla with that uh, story. Clearly, it may take much longer for the deadlock to be broken. Meanwhile, India Today's Rahul Kaval now explains the area along the critical Pangong Lake in Ladakh where the current India-China standoff is being witnessed. Take a look. So, On this side of the Pangong is the Indian deployment. This is finger one, finger two, finger three. We have a post there. There's also a base, an Indian Army base. And from the last Indian Army base, this line is dotted. It's dotted because there is no road going from uh, the base till finger four. The Indian Army actually patrols it on foot. So you've got a road, a proper metallic, a proper road coming up till finger three. And then you've got the Indian Army having to patrol the Chinese on the other hand. This is their... Uh, base. So they've got one military base at Sirijap 1, one military base at Sirijap 2, then they have a base further up. This is finger 8. Now why this area is contentious is because ordinarily the Indian Army patrols up till finger 8. Now either they can walk along this path or they can take the boats. You see some boats uh, in the Pangong Lake. So they can patrol using the boats but our patrol goes up till finger 8. However, what the Chinese did in 1999, when the Indian Army had evacuated forces from here because of the Kargil War, they built a road, at that time it was a Kacha road, going up till Finger 4. What they've done recently over the past few weeks is that they've been able to make it a hard top, a metallic road, which makes it easy for them to bring more troops, more equipment in, and even take it out. So this is Finger 7, Finger 6, Finger 5, and then Finger 4. So the Chinese are currently sitting till finger four. India claims the line uh, of actual control runs through finger eight. This purple line that you see on the map is the line that India believes is the line of actual control. This other purple line is the line that China believes is the line of actual control. So this area in the middle is the disputed area, which is what the confrontation is currently all about, because we claim that the line runs up till here, the Chinese claim the line runs up till here, and as a reality, they're currently sitting up till finger four, which disallows Indian patrols from going further. So that's broadly the lay of the land. So you've got a sense of what the Chinese, where the Chinese are at the moment. Let's raise the big question. What are India's options now? Has China actually intruded into Indian territory and what is China's game plan at the moment. I'm joined by General VP Malik, former Chief of Army Staff. I'm joined by General Bikram Singh, another former Chief of Army Staff and Ambassador Ashok Kanta, former Ambassador to China and Director Institute of Chinese Studies. Appreciate all of you joining us on the show. Let's first look at the military engagement because today was the day where we expected some breakthrough. Others would say that you cannot get a breakthrough in meeting number one. General Malik, are you surprised that the Chinese don't seem to have bent at all? Um, no, I'm not surprised, frankly. 
the fact is that they have occupied uh, the area uh, both in Galwan Valley as well as uh, north of uh, Pangangso very deliberately. They have brought their troops and they have camped. And I'm also the information is that they have also brought heavy weapons which are in the close proximity. So apparently they have come uh, well prepared and uh, it's going to be a long haul both for them as well as for us. What, where does that leave General Singh India? You know, what is the Chinese strategic objective here? I mean, is the, are the Chinese trying to sort of engage in muscle flexing? Or do you believe there is something more, something more sinister in the Chinese aims, which according to uh, not just General Malik, but others have suggested, including the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh, includes occupying Indian territory at the moment? Well, uh, Rajdeep, I feel that, uh, yeah, you asked me that question, Rajdeep, yes, yes. aimed at me? That yes, question? yes, yes, General Right. You see, uh, <clears throat> yes, you know, uh, China definitely is, is looking for some diversionary, you know, means. Let's be very clear. Uh, you know, at the moment, Xi Jinping's, uh, you know, hands are full. Uh, there is a growing kind of a sentiment which is anti Xi Jinping in China because of the handling of pandemic, uh, you know, with regard to the economy, which is shrinking, joblessness, uh, what's going on with the United States, uh, the trade war, uh, what's happening in Hong Kong, Taiwan. So th there are a lot of people today who actually are questioning his leadership. It has impacted his leadership. Therefore, let me try and come back to you, General Singh. Need, we are having a bit of a, a problem with your audio. One yeah, go ahead. of the reasons why China could have done it, that is diverting the attention and China's fervor to divert the attention of its masses. So that's one. Right. The, the second is, uh, you know, right, Deep, this is regarding the, the, the China, the, the Pakistan factor as well. Let's be very clear. You know, after we sort of reorganized the, the map, the political map of Jammu and Kashmir and had redrawn the Union territories in Jammu and Kashmir, it has bothered China definitely because... And, and we, we made very clear, you know, certain statements that have emanated from our political leadership. Yes. And rightly so, that POK belongs to us. And that's a stated position. That may have bothered, uh, you know, China again. Mm -hmm. But I think what may have been the coup de grace, uh, the final blow perhaps, which perhaps prompted, uh, you know, uh, Xi Jinping to do this, may be the relocation of the manufacturing from China, uh, possibly to India. And India has been wooing, you know, India provides very, uh, I would say, uh, fabulous grounds for, for industry to come and, you know, so, uh, relocate themselves from China. Uh, they are doing it in Bangladesh, they are doing it in other Southeastern countries. So the, the Xi Jinping's leadership has definitely been under, under a lot of pressure. So it could be diversity tactics and also to give a message to India to sort of, you know, uh, remain uh, in, in check and not to blatantly sort of, you know, challenge China uh, on the international scene let me take that to you ambassador Kanta. Do you, you know because there have been already 12 rounds of talks between local commanders of the two armies three rounds of di uh, discussion mr kanta so do you believe that at the end of the day this cannot this has to be resolved diplomatically there will be contentious disputes between the two countries about the line of actual control what constitutes indian territory what constitutes chinese territory this has been going on for years so therefore, any resolution at the moment has to be done diplomatically behind the scenes. There were video conferences, we are told, involving ambassadors and diplomats of the two countries yesterday. Is that the way forward? You know, Razdeep, I believe you know, it can be a mix of engagement at the military level as well as through diplomatic channels. As you mentioned, yesterday we had a meeting, the working mechanism, where two ambassadors also joined. Uh, we had uh, generally positive sentiments coming out of the meeting, going by briefings given both by Ministry of External Affairs in New Delhi and Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing, as also tweet by the Chinese ambassador here. Uh, so there is, uh, you know, engagement at diplomatic level which has started uh, today. We had a high-level meeting at the military at between military commanders of two sides, mm -hmm. uh, our core commander on our side and uh, commander of military district on Chinese side, which is really unprecedented. Normally, military commanders have not met at that level. So there is a serious intent on both sides to try and find a solution to this problem. There are also some other positive developments, like, you know, rhetoric coming out of both countries mm -hmm. has been relatively 
uh, muted and restrained. They both are talking in terms of resolution of the problem uh, on the ground. Also, after incidents which took place at Nakula and Northern Bank or Pankung Lake uh, uh, last month, the uh, situation has been relatively under control. There have not been any reports of skirmish. Mm -hmm. But then, why, the positive side. But, but then why, Ambassador, if, if the two sides really wanted to de-escalate, why would the Chinese escalate the issue in the first place with this aggressive build-up along the border? If they, if know, the, what, what, what was the intention then? You know, it is a serious incident, rather a set of incidents that's taking place along the borders. Uh, this is not a normal, a routine occurrence. Uh, why it's happening, you know, one can only speculate on that. Uh, there could be multiple motives in play. Uh, there could be, you know, assertion of Chinese territorial claims, uh, not only along the northern bank of Pankung Lake, but mm -hmm. also in a new area, uh, Galwan River Valley, where we did not anticipate differences on the line of actual control. Plus, I suspect there is a broader messaging going on vis-a-vis -vis India, whether it be with regard to construction of uh, infrastructure on our side, the LAC, or you no know, issues in India-China relations, or more broadly with regard to positions we are taking or Chinese are concerned we'll be taking on issues like Indo-Pacific or mm -hmm. China's accountability on COVID-19. You know, the question, of course, General Malik, is that uh, give us a sense, your view, can the Chinese put that kind of pressure militarily on our forces? This is certainly not 1962. We are in 2020. But do you believe that the Chinese still have that ability, the capacity to put that kind of sustained pressure and force us to back off? Or do we now have the capacity to force the Chinese to back off? Uh, Rajiv, uh, the fact is that they have been doing this kind of pressure tactics along the line of actual control for a long time. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, they have got away with it. Uh, Earlier, we were not as strong along the line of actual control because we didn't have the infrastructure and we didn't have adequate troops. But today's situation is quite different. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, I believe that uh, we can handle these skirmishes if they take place, uh, whether it is Galwan or uh, even uh, uh, north of Panganso. It may not be exactly at the same place, but I do believe that we are capable of creating the same kind of situation for the Chinese uh, elsewhere. So situation is quite different. And uh, if, um, uh, if that kind of a situation arises of a conflict, mm -hmm. uh, then I think uh, the Chinese will find that we uh, have better capability, much better capability than they are thinking at the moment. But presumably, General Singh, this is not designed uh... To, uh, for a military conflict as much as a pressure tactic. That's the sense one gets. Would you agree with that, that this is broadly the Chinese trying to, in a way, uh, send out a message, as you said earlier, uh, possibly to India, possibly to the rest of the world, including uh, the United States? Uh, yes, I agree with that, that there is a strong messaging here, mm -hmm. uh, and it is not only at the tactical level, it is at the strategic level, and uh, uh, therefore the point is that can we keep on taking this, these coercion tactics uh, by the Chinese, for how long will we, uh, will we do that? So that is the point, and if we give in here, mm -hmm. then there will be greater pressure tactics elsewhere. For so, example, development of roads that is taking place, mm -hmm. which we have followed what the Chinese have been doing. How can we stop that? There is no way that we should stop. And uh, so we have to be prepared for uh, both uh, uh, military action somewhere if it is required. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think also I must say that strong defenses will enable strong diplomacy on our side. You know, and that, therefore, it is important for us to remain strong uh, right. in these positions today uh, and give a message to them that, look, we are also capable of uh, doing something similar elsewhere. You know, General Singh, do you believe, uh, you know, there are those who say the Chinese have caught us napping. There are those critics of our, you know, who would say that the Chinese have, or military analysts, why not, why call them critics, military analysts who say the Chinese have caught us napping. Yes, we were building a road in the area. We claim it was on our side of the line of actual control. 
But the Chinese with this aggressive buildup has have caught us, if not napping, unawares. That we we did not expect this kind of uh, uh, military buildup. Would you agree with that? that the, have the Chinese caught us on the uh, uh, in the area unawares? No, no, I I, I don't think so. Right, you see, uh, I know there are certain sections of the media that covered you know some of these uh, uh, I would say some of these uh, assessments by uh, some of the strategists who are basically looking at uh, India-China relations. But uh, let's be very clear, it is not the line of control like you have with Pakistan where you have eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball contact and every inch is covered through deployment. Here there are vast tracks where there are no troops. Let's be very clear. And uh, anybody who's gone to that area, mm -hmm. I have flown over that entire area extensively. There are pockets where our troops are located and there are vast gaps which are patrolled. And that's where, you know, face off occur when we go and they also come along. So I don't think people have been caught napping. And let me tell you, they're very competent commanders in that place. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people talk about it. Uh, the present army commander was a, was a DA in China. I mean, he, he's commanded a brigade there where at the moment this uh, skirmish is taking place. He's commanded the division there. He's commanded 14 corps, which is being presently commanded by Lieutenant General Harinder Singh. And same is the case with the co-commander. The yeah. commander, the brigade commanders over there, they're very competent people. Mm -hmm. They've not been caught sleeping. But the point is, at issue is, you know, uh, what what you asked this question earlier, in fact, it was to me, and I think General Malik yes. took it on, thanks to him, because he's a senior chief, and I'm glad he answered that. You know, uh, I think uh, as far as the tactical level is concerned, let us delink it from the strategic arena. Because at the strategic level, there is a lot to gain through Bonhomi with China. Mm -hmm. Because the antagonistic relationship between the two countries do not take us anywhere. Both nations are aspiring to be global powers regional parts mm -hmm. and i think this this journey towards that you know distinguished status should continue and i feel as a strategy as far as india is concerned we should do muscle flexing at the military level at the tactical level mm -hmm. it must go on we should be firm we should not you know uh, concede even an inch to them there is no mm -hmm. question but at the strategic level i think there's a need to to keep the temperatures low and i think we need to strengthen me... our combat part and Let me wait take till that to, strong enough to knock the adversary down. Let me take that to Ambassador Kanta because Ambassador Kanta, you know, look at where we've come from Jula diplomacy that Mr. Modi did with the Chinese leadership when he came to power. He invested a lot of personal equity in that relationship to now where we hear ministers or certainly senior uh, uh, members of the ruling party calling for a boycott of Chinese goods. Look at where we've gone in the space from, uh, you know, uh, sitting together on a swing in Ahmedabad to now calling for an economic boycott. Have we, has our diplomacy at some stage also been taken for granted? No, I will not say that our diplomacy has been taken for granted. No, this is a very complex relationship that we have with China. It's a relationship where we seek constructive engagement. At the same time, there are a whole lot of outstanding issues that need to be managed. We have a situation where Chinese have not been mindful of our sensitivities. We have a situation where Chinese have tried to you know, keep us off balance through their strategic relations with Pakistan, for mm -hmm. instance. So there are, there is a basic you know, suspicion about each other's strategic intent on both sides. So it's a difficult relationship inherently. At the same time, you know, as General Singh said, uh, there is a need to see that we move down the road of constructive engagement. But doesn't it raise time, a question mark, Ambassador, uh, doesn't it raise a question mark over Mr. Modi's outreach over these years to China? Only two years ago, he was in Mahabalipuram. We are putting up pictures. He's invested a lot of personal capital. You know, yes, true. He has invested personal capital, uh, which has helped to some extent in the sense that uh, while there has been uh, ups and downs in the relationship, uh, you know, effort has been to keep it an even keel. Mm -hmm. I think that's a laudable objective, but we should not disregard the fact that if we have problems in relationship. Chinese are very aggressive. If you look at their behavior in case of you know, recent border incidents, uh, this is not at all something routine. They right. have been exceptionally aggressive. They have tried to change the status quo on the ground. They have moved into area like Galwan River Valley, where they were not present earlier. Uh, they have been skirmishes resulting on mm -hmm. large number of injuries on our side. So we have to take the relationship uh, in full perspective. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We've, we've, we've heard three different points of view or certainly contrasting uh, viewpoints from a military perspective and a diplomatic perspective, either of which seem to suggest 
beware of the dragon. Thank you all very much for joining me here at the top of the show tonight. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.